Hey guys, welcome to Queens of Grace Unveiled. My name is Milka Rezena and I'm so excited, you guys. Like, it's been a long time coming, but by the grace of God, we made it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm super excited just to get started to create a platform to talk about Jesus, all things Christ, period. So I'm just super excited for this very first episode. I'm going to be talking about my testimony, and I also asked you guys for questions, so I wrote all of them down. So I'm super excited to go through all these questions as well because um throughout my journey with god i've been getting a lot of questions just people in my community and my family and just so many people around me asking me how did you truly find god and why are you doing it you know so i'm just super excited to just start this platform podcast to just open up and just let people know what it truly means to be a disciple of christ and why i'm doing it and what's the purpose of it and just share everything with you guys so first i'm gonna start off with my testimony that was a very common question that a lot of you guys asked and my testimony <laughs> my testimony is a bit weird like i don't have too crazy of like a beginning um it's really funny because my experience and journey with god started in college so i was a senior in college um yeah i started my senior year beginning -ish middle-ish of my senior year of college um and yeah randomly i'm not even joking literally one day literally one day i woke up and i was like i am so bored of life like i was just in this place mentally where i was like i don't know what to do anymore like my days were getting so repetitive i felt like i was doing the same thing every single day like i could tell you exactly what my days were going to be like I could tell you exactly what I was going to do every weekend. Like, I just, it was just too, I don't know. Like, it was weird. Like, I was very happy, but it was, like, mentally, I felt bored. I was like, what is life? Like, what am I doing? Like, why am I in school? Like, mind you, I'm a senior, too, and I'm like, mm, we don't make it to the end. But, like, I was like, what is the point of all this? Like, why am I doing this, you know? And I kid you not, randomly, one day I woke up, and I was like, I want to read my Bible. Like, I need to start reading the Bible. Like, something's up. Like, mind you, I don't really have that much of a backstory to my relationship with God. So, me waking up and being like, I want to read the Bible was very out of the ordinary for me. And just for people around me, too. They're like, this girl's reading the Bible. Who done told her about the Bible? You know? But um, I literally just like, you know, whatever. I'm going to read it. And I just started. I started really slow, you know? Um, so, I started reading my Bible. And one person in my life that was a very big part of my testimony is my best friend she also was trying to tap into the bible as well so we were like starting around the same time so i was like amen like i'm not doing this alone um but mind you she lives all the way in california and i live in colorado so but we still besties right so she was um on her journey as well you know we joined bible studies and she was more encouraging than me she's like let's join like let's watch this join this bible study and i'm like i don't really want to but i'm like you know what i said i want to read the bible more and i want to get closer to god so i guess i'm going to so i would start joining bible studies more we actually did a bible we had like a little bible study ourselves like me and her would read the bible together every night so you know like that's how it started off and um you know, it was pretty cool. Like, it was good. Like, you know, I was still falling short sometimes. I wasn't as consistent as I, as consistent as I wanted to be and stuff like that. But it was pretty much, that was basically how it started. And I kid you not, as like, glory be to God, all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. I don't know what shifted in the spirit. But literally, it was like, like i don't even know like all of a sudden i just started i fell into a hole of jesus Woo! it was so crazy like i just started watching um sermons you know i start off slowly with sermons because i'm like you know what like i need to listen to sermons more and mind you i come from an ethiopian orthodox background so i wasn't really too educated in that area as well because i didn't go to church as often i didn't really take part in my ethiopian orthodox community here in colorado because i live an hour away so i was very much by myself so i was like you know what let me just watch sermons let me find no new knowledge from somebody right so i'm like okay cool um i was watching sermons and um 
I kid you not, all of a sudden, I come home one day for Christmas break and I'm reading my Bible, watching sermons. And my sister comes, my little sister comes in my room and she goes, are you reading your Bible? And I'm like, yeah, I read my Bible. She goes, oh my gosh, me too. I was like, oh, cool. Like, I guess we on this journey together. Like, you know, and um, yeah, all of a sudden, a couple, like uh, shortly after she showed me a video of Prophet Lovi. Ooh, Prophet Lovi, my goodness. And ever since that day, I can honestly say the teachings of Prophet Lovi and just even just experiencing and just being there at Revelation Church has completely changed my life. My spiritual journey and my connection with God has never been this strong. I've never seen anything like it. Like it's honestly amazing. And um, ever since then, I'm telling you, it's been up. Like I've been on this journey with Prophet Lovi as my spiritual father, me, my sister, from then on, we joined a nine-week program. We were in California for three months um, in this ministry program to help us be more educated and more well-versed on the things that we need to know regarding God because our foundation wasn't as strong. And just so many things from there shifted for us. And it was honestly by the grace of God. And it was such a blessing. But yeah, that's basically my testimony. It started all in my room literally that's where it all began in my room like there's not too much detail about it like i don't like it it really is just that and even regarding like the first time i heard god's voice and stuff like that like that was okay so with that um you know that's a story for another time because i want to have the person join my podcast one day and i want them to explain as well because there is someone that played a very big role in my life to how i heard god for the first time so by the grace of god we'll get there but um the next question was how old were you when you started seeking god i was 21 i literally just turned 22 on august 7th so 21 yeah i started my senior years i was 21 so yeah you know i was in college 21 Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Um, I have all the questions written down here. I'm going to go through and I'm just going to pick the next one I feel like is. Um, is. Ooh. OK, so these were two questions, but I combine them because they kind of related to me. The first question was, what change in your life helped you get closer to God in the beginning of your journey? And did you distance yourself from people once you got closer to God? Okay, so the reason I combined those two questions was because the change in my life that I had to do did regard um, or did involve distancing myself for a little bit, but only for a little bit. Because for me, at the very beginning of my, of my relationship and my walk with God, it was very important to distance myself because, mind you, I was in college. I was on a campus where every Saturday we, we go up. OK, so it was just a lot of things. And it was just people like even just like my friend group, we all were on different paths in a sense. So I had to distance myself for a little bit because the beginning of your relationship with God is the most important because the beginning of anything is the foundation right so i knew that in order to be strong and to be firm in christ i needed a solid foundation so i distanced myself and i was reading the bible a lot i was you know watching sermons a lot and i was really really just kind of isolating myself but me and god right so i wasn't really isolated but i was kind of just spending my one-on-one -on -one time with god because i knew that you know my foundation and the beginning right the beginning is the most important and that needs to be firm like the, even the beginning of a house when you're building a house the foundation has to be firm so that when somebody steps on it it won't crumble so i knew with my relationship with god that was just as relevant right because there was just so many things i lacked and there's so many things i didn't know that i knew i needed to learn and i knew that i was only distancing myself for a little bit because at the end of the day as disciples of christ we are called to the world not called to the church okay like so with the things that i was learning and the things that i was um with this new knowledge and this new wisdom that god and the holy spirit was you know giving to me i knew that i was gonna have to turn around and give it back to those around me right so i was like okay in order for me to go back into i guess in a sense encounter and just talk to those people in my life who don't really see eye to eye with my relationship with god or don't even believe in god or have a different perspective of god i knew that my foundation has to be firm because the moment they stepped on it if i wasn't firm in god they could crumble everything i built with him you know what i mean everything could fall so i needed i needed to learn and know my identity in christ um 
so yeah, that's so that was part of the change I had to do was really pay attention to who was in my life at the time, especially around the beginning. And to yeah, just it was distancing myself. That was a really big one. Um and I also and it, I mean it was it was hard at first because I felt like I was missing out on a lot of things. I was like, oh my gosh, my friends are going out on a thing, okay? Like, oh y'all gonna do this? Okay, yes, and picks, you know, like it was just it was kind of sad at first, but the more time you spend with God, the more you realize, oh, okay, we really are in the world, but not of the world. You get what I'm saying? I really started to understand the spirit of God that was in me. I was like, oh, okay, so I'm not missing out on anything. In fact, I am gaining. I am gaining so much by spending time with God, you know? So that that was a big change that I had to implement in my life. Um and you, the second question was, did you distance yourself from people once you got closer to God? I did at the beginning, but then I went back and I made sure that like with the new knowledge and the new things I was learning, I was helping them because what you don't do is spend time with God, learn, increase in all these areas spiritually and walk away from them because who else is going to help them? You know, the crazy and sad thing is sometimes that you might be the only person that that you might be the only time a person encounters Jesus. So you have to resemble Christ in a way that they know that they can too also see God. So don't turn your back from people and shy away from talking to them like, oh girl, are you still doing this? Mm-mm. If, if Jesus is patient with her or him, you can be patient with her or him because you don't want to condemn or like, you know, make people feel less than when you're on your journey with God because what's the point? We're all here to, call, we're all called to help, you know, bring people to christ so when you're the person kind of bringing them down or making them feel like they're not worthy now come on that's not what we do (laughs) so yeah um so i did have to distance myself and that was a big change and the beautiful thing about seeking god though the more you are in god's presence and the more you spend time with god you naturally just shift like everything about you starts to change like your personality not personality but like the way you view things start to change the way you carry yourself the way you approach people you start to i'm not even joking you just start to see the light and everything you start you know everything just looks brighter you look outside like goodness look at god's creation like everything is just so beautiful it really is like everything is so meaningful because when god created us he paid so much attention and he is so intentional with all he does. So the more you see God, the more beautiful life is, you know? Amen. Let me find the next question. Um, that was a good question, though. Those two questions, I really, really like that one. Um, the next question. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, what was your awakening call, if any? Um, I think this question was like, I had to think about it for quite some time because I don't like, I like, I kid you not, my journey with God started like this and went like out of nowhere. So it wasn't even like an awakening call. I guess it was. It was just me in my room in college in Greeley, Colorado, sitting on my bed one day like, you know what, Lord, like there's something I need to do, you know, and that was my awakening. I didn't. It wasn't like a a long process for me. I literally just woke up one day and I was like, okay, I need to start reading my Bible. And from there on, with the little that I put into God, he took that and said, that's all I need to take you where I need you to go. So literally, that was it for me. That was that was it. <laughs> By the grace of God. Oof, thank you, Jesus. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Mm. All these questions are so good. I don't know what order to go in. Um, okay. Um, the next question I'm going to go with is what did you do when you felt like you were stuck, but still on your journey with God? Okay. This is also a very common question that people are asking me because a lot of people have this perception that once you're on your journey with God, you know, there's going to be no stumbling. It's going to be no spiritual warfare, no nothing. It's just up because it's you and God going up like and that honestly is not the truth. (laughs) Like I feel like with me, my journey with God has been so challenging, but in the best way possible, though, because it's really humbling when you start to realize like oh the way i was living life is not even close to what i thought i should 
be living like, if that makes sense. Um, simply because when you are living in this world and not, you know, not with God, you don't realize who you are to him and you don't realize the authority and the power and the crazy things he has put inside of you. You know what I'm saying? So, um, going back to the topic, um, so what did I do when I felt stuck? Um, I just made sure that I was super consistent because I knew consistency is key in everything in life, not even just spiritually, but also in the carnal earthly realm. Like you have to be consistent with everything you do, you know, and I knew it was super important because at the at the beginning, I wasn't really making God a priority in my relationship with him. I was, you know, kind of just reading my Bible and praying when I meet when I had time. Like if I wasn't too busy that day, I guess I'd read the Bible at night. You know, if I'm not too tired. I, I'm a put in a scripture before I go to bed, but it's like, that's not how you should operate, you know, especially when it comes to the things that you know are of value and you know that are, that you care about. So I had to genuinely treat this like a real earthly relationship. Like I had to be consistent. I had to talk to God every day. I had to read the word every day, you know, and even in John 15, four, I wrote the scripture down. It says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it ab- abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me meaning we simply cannot live or grow without god he is the vine you know and we have to abide in him so we have to rely and be consistent with him because he is literally the root of it all literally the root of it all so you know it's just just make sure you're um consistent and that's the thing you might feel like you're stuck for a really long time but that's just the journey that's just the process you know what i mean everything the beginning of everything always feels super long you know even if you think about it the beginning of like your journey in the gym right people be going to the gym every single day for a week and be like i see no results i'm not doing this anymore but you know we all know that it takes three weeks 21 days to build a habit so people be going to the gym for 11 days but because they don't see the results they quit and they drop it Mm -mm. you got to keep going you know what i'm saying change doesn't happen overnight you have to be consistent in the in the process that you want especially if you know there's an outcome that you want to receive you can't just start one day two day three day and be like so where where is jesus like i've been praying all day i don't see him that's not how it works like you know you have to genuinely put in time and effort you know what i mean because god sees he sees your heart he sees the time and the effort you're putting into this so be consistent you know what i mean don't be that person that quits because they don't see things happening overnight like that's probably the worst thing you could do for yourself and honestly that's not going to get you anywhere not even just spiritually with relationship with god but just in general and things of this world like you don't you don't graduate in two days it takes four years to get a diploma so like you know what i mean like you have to be consistent and trust that god is not leading you astray god is our shepherd jesus christ is our shepherd let me correct myself jesus christ is our shepherd so he knows how to he knows how to be a shepherd amen he's gonna take us on the path that we need to go no matter how long it takes and we might not understand things at time but just know that he knows the ending so just have trust and faith that literally jesus is the way and that he's taking you where you need to be regardless of how long it feels you know everything is worth it at the end everything literally is worth it in the end amen so that was a really good question too um oh another good question was how did you reconnect with god when you felt as if your life had no meaning anymore um this kind of relates to my college story like i was in college like i don't want to do this every day like i was so over it you know but what i had to do to really you know reconnect with god and just to truly truly see a different light i guess was i had to surrender i literally was like okay god like I truly surrender, right? So me leading my life made me not want my life. So I want what you have for me. What do you have for me? Because the more I read the word, and one thing about me, I'm always going to refer back to the Bible because I'm telling you, the Bible has, if you you really read the Bible and just meditate on the word, I'm, I kid you not, you will start to realize your authority and the power you have in christ not alone but in christ because there's just so many things that god has for us that some of us don't even know and some of us will never really you know encounter if we don't open up our eyes to god you know 
But yeah, I really surrendered. I was like, God, I didn't, I didn't like the way I was leading myself. So I'm gonna have you lead me this time because there's gonna be something different. You know what I mean? Like there has to be something different. So I truly surrendered. I gave my will to God. I was like, God, I want you, let your will be done. I don't want to do this. I want your will in my life because there's, I know there's more, you know, even, oh, I have a scripture too. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I knew the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. I'm like, uh, give me give me hope give me the plans you have for me to prosper that's what i want you know what i mean that's what i need so i really really trusted in the word of god and i was like okay if he could do this back then he could do it for me if god is the same god of then and now a god that doesn't change if he could do it for them how much more for me i am still his daughter at the end of the day i know he can do it for me it's just knowing and truly understanding that once i give to god he is gonna show me who i am so i really trusted in that and it's also understanding that god wants us happy you guys god wants us happy he has so many things for us and like when you start to feel depressed or sad or just lost like those are not of god god is a god of clarity god is a god of love god is a god of hope joy all things good you know so when you start to understand that okay this feeling i'm feeling this sick feeling i'm feeling is not of god because i know the god that i serve you know what i mean and once you start to understand god and read the word of god and you know learn more about who he is to us you'll start to differentiate like okay this weird feeling i have in my stomach is not him so therefore i need to refresh my mind and find out what is him so that i know i'm on the right path you know so yeah so for me um how i really reconnected with god even if my life felt like i had no meaning i gave up on trying to use my own strength and relied on the lord's because oh my goodness i'm telling you that's when things really shifted and changed for me when i started relying on the lord's strength amen i guys i'm telling you life with god is just so much better in every aspect i i can't even explain <laughs> but Okay, let's see. Another question. Um, oh, this is a really funny question. Okay, what was your thought on living a saved life before you were actually saved? What were your thoughts versus reality? <laughs> when I saw this question, I was like, let me think about it. Like, I honestly can say, I would hear people say this a lot. Like, oh, I'm saved or oh, this. And I'm like, I didn't think like, in my head, I'm like, oh, you're saved. I'm saved. I was like, oh, I'm saved. Like, because the opposite of saved is what? Like, I'm lost. Like, I'm I'm like, I'm not whatever that is. Like, I know I'm saved, even if I really wasn't. You know, like, I didn't really think too much of it because in my head, like, I didn't relate it to a Christian thing. Like, I, I did, but didn't. In the weirdest way, I don't know how to explain it. I just didn't think it was that deep. I didn't. Like, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was like, oh, I'm saved. And then when I would watch videos or see TikToks of people who were saved, giving their life to God and just talking about God all the time, I'm like, oh, like, I'm saved, but I don't want to do all that. You know what I mean? I'm like, I know I'm saved. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was kind of making my own, I was remixing the title and just freeballing it because I didn't know what it was. And I was just like, all I know is I'm not lost, so I'm saved. <laughs> like, that was really just my mentality on it. But once I truly got saved, my goodness, ah, like, it's funny because I just remember looking at these um, people or even just like just watching sermons and people talking about God. I'm like, how do they do that? Like, why are they so passionate? It can't be that deep. It is that deep. It, it, you are that passionate. It's such a real thing. Like when I tell you, once you have your encounter with Jesus, it's like no other. It's like an addiction. You know what I mean? You can't get enough of it. That's all you want to do. That's all you want to talk about. You want all your friends. I want all my homegirls, all my family, everybody I know, all my loved ones. I want everybody to experience this. So it's funny because I guess I didn't even understand what it was because I thought it was like a weird thing. I'm like, I don't want to do too much, all that. Like they just are doing too much, but it's, <laughs> it's really the reality. Like it's just when you truly find your identity in christ you want everybody to know because you want to spread the good news you want people to know you know but yeah that was a really funny question because my answer i was like oh my gosh i just remember like it took me back to when i was like all i know is i'm not lost i'm saved i'm whatever that means like <laughs> oh my goodness that's so funny 
um let's see i think i have like one or two more questions i combined a lot of these because some of them are um pretty repetitive um like this one was like how do you stay on fire for god and how do you keep your focus on god the same thing be consistent stay you know surround yourself with people who are also seeking god too you know not not saying i not not in a sense of like only be around them and ignore all those and you know condemn those who aren't but it's like you know you need a group of people who can keep you accountable and just can help make sure you're on the right path because that's super important because one thing for me at at the very beginning of my relationship with god it was really just me my little sister and my best friend all the way in california like it was really just us three and it was like all of us three and mind you my sister was two hours away from me at the time because i was in college and that was, my campus was two hours away so it was really hard for me to like do things when everyone that was seeking god was so far from me you know it was really just me at some point i was like oh this is lonely but like the more you spend time with god you realize it don't matter if there is nobody in the house you will feel more like you will just feel more loved than being in a room full of people who don't know anything about you or don't even care about you you know so to stay on fire for god you know surround yourself with people you know join bible studies fellowship with others like just make sure you don't make yourself an island and isolate yourself to the point where you're alone because that's truly the work of the enemy but make sure you you know just spend time with people who are also on the same path and you know make friends make friends because that's the thing like you you'll always find somebody who understands you at like when it comes to your journey with god because there might be someone who might not be there yet, but even if they're still trying, that's still someone you can kind of minister to and help, like, allow them to grow with you, you know? So just, yeah, surround yourself with people who are also, you know, seeking God, but don't don't shy away from those who aren't because we're called to help those who aren't. Amen. Um, oh, this is a good question. It says, how do you know I'm on the right path with Christ? Okay, so one thing about me, I, please, I'm gonna find a scripture for everything. So the scripture that I had was Psalms 19, 105, I mean, 119, 105. It says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So literally, right, the more you read the word of God and the more you understand the way Jesus walked, you'll start to understand how you should walk because we're all here to resemble Christ on earth. You know what I'm saying? We're all here to be an extension of jesus you get what i'm saying so the more you start to resemble christ and walk in the power and the authority he had because he even said we'll walk in the things that he did and more so when you start to walk in that authority you know you're on the right path because the holy spirit will tell you you know what i mean the holy spirit will tell you everything you know that you know he'll make sure that you're on the right path so just make sure that the way you're living and just the things that you're doing resemble what jesus did because that's how you truly know that you're on the right path you know praise god praise god oh this is a good question what's your advice these are two these are two questions that i combined again um what's your advice on people trying to get closer to god or get to know god and how did you how did you build your consistency with christ there are too many distractions so i combine these two because my advice for those who are trying to get closer to god is to be consistent <laughs> like that's really what it is um it's just to be consistent and to know that change doesn't happen overnight so don't expect yourself to be a new creature in the morning like that's not really how it works um but it's to be consistent and to be disciplined um do whatever you have to do to stay on track you know what i mean you know yourself and only you know your heart you know so do things that you know will help you be true to god right so limit social media if you have to limit that amount of times you go out kind of you know make a schedule if you have to be like okay from this time to this time i'm free but after this time it's the lord's you know what i'm saying so really put value on your relationship with god because that's the only way you have to be disciplined if you're not disciplined then it's going to be really hard for you you know it's going to be wishy-washy and it's going to feel like nothing is changing but that's why you have to be disciplined and just try to stay consistent as much as possible oh but most most importantly please 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 read the word of god daily okay meditate on the word of god truly truly just spend time with god and and even with me at the very beginning of my journey with christ i was reading nlt niv which is no problem you know what i mean don't think you have to read the king james version off the bat because i was reading it like what type of spanish like i was like this is not english you know and it wasn't until you know i 
grew spiritually that I could have you know start to understand it better but start off at your level do whatever you have to do to understand the word of god even if it's a little watered down okay it's still the drink drink it you know what i'm saying like just do what you have to do to read and truly understand the word of god and even to this day i go back and forth with um versions like i'll be reading king james and i'll go to new king james and i'll go to nlt if i really need to like it's just do what you have to do you know um yeah, and that's the funny thing too, because the more you start to spend time with God, the things that look like distractions and we're like, oh, da, 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 they're going to start to look like red flags that you're going to run away from. Because it's funny, because the more my spiritual eyes were open and I truly was op- like aware of just things that are of God and that aren't of God and just, you know, the discernment that God has put in me, I was like, wow, like that's funny, because had this been 10 months ago, I would have fell for that. But now I'm like, don't even find somebody else to play with. You know what I mean? So, yeah, just do whatever you have to do to to spend time with God and to make time for God. Amen. Um, I think, um, let's see. Oh, this is a really good question. These are two questions, but I combine them. Someone said, how do you pray and how do you fast? Please give me tips. Okay. So with prayer... I have a prayer closet. So it's a closet strictly for me and the Lord. I have my altar. I have my murals, my Bible, you know, just things that resemble God in there. Nothing, nothing too crazy, but um, just things that I know is just what I need in my room just to spend time with God. I have my anointing oils, my oils, my everything. Um, and yeah, I, that's, that's really how I go into my secret place and I pray and I spend time with God. And please, 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 when it comes to praying, don't be the person that's like, oh, God knows my heart. He, he can read. He knows me. He made me. Oh, God knows my heart and mind. No, 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 no. Like, yes, of course, God knows your heart and mind. But that doesn't mean don't spend time with him just because he knows you have to be intentional with your relationship with God. You actually have to spend time with him. So when it comes to prayer, dwell in his presence sit there challenge yourself be there for 30 minutes an hour however long you can physically be there for spend time with god in your secret place because that's how you meet god that's how you'll have an encounter with god meditate on his word pray to him talk to the lord don't be like oh he knows my heart i ain't gotta say nothing what no (laughs) you really do have to say something you know what i mean because how are you gonna expect to have a relationship or build or just hear someone you don't talk to you know so treat God just as the same, like genuinely dwell in his presence, you know, even Psalms and Psalms. I don't. Yeah. It says he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. So dwell in his presence. Don't just sit there. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Go. No, dwell in his presence. Absorb the atmosphere. Create an atmosphere where you know Jesus would want to come meet you there. Create an atmosphere where your angels would want to sit there and worship and pray with you. You know what I mean? Don't be wishy-washy. Don't. Don't. That's the thing. When you're, when you're praying, make sure praying is your number one priority. Don't be thinking about other things. Okay, I'm hungry. So da, da, da. go eat before you do something. Do all the things you need to do before you are going to pray because you want to give God your undivided attention. You want to give him everything you have in you, you know, and you want to be open to to his voice and to, to the signs that he might give you that he's there, you know. So yeah, when it comes to prayer, make sure you're your mind is clear if you want to you know worship before you pray do that do whatever you need to do to stir up your spirit amen and for fasting so for fasting i normally i do like okay so with my fasting i do like time fasts meaning like okay it'll be from midnight to to 5 p.m where i don't eat that whole day until 5 p.m and then after i could eat what i want but even when i do eat right and and when i when i when I do break the fast, I eat light because I don't want to eat so much to where I'm lazy and I go to bed because that defeats the purpose, you know? So let's say if I'm fasting for three days from midnight to 5 p.m., for those three days, I'm going to eat really light and I'm going to eat things that I typically wouldn't eat if I'm fasting because I want to, I'm eating technically to keep my body alive in a sense because what I, like you're going to supplement real food for the word of God. So instead of eating from 12 to 5 i'm going to be praying and uh, meditating on the word and feeding my spirit instead of my flesh and my body you know so when it comes to fasting make sure that 
it's revolved around your prayer time and it's revolved around you reading the bible because that's how you increase your spirit man you know so that's also the main purpose of fasting is kind of to crucify the flesh and just strengthen the spirit and to hear god's voice clear and just to do things to strengthen the inner man so that's um that's how i pray and how i fast and i'm pretty sure um let me see i'm pretty sure that's all the questions that i picked y'all had some very good questions and i'm super super blessed and honored to even just be here right now and just to speak about this because it's been a long time coming and i've been super nervous but once i truly understood that i'm not doing this for me i'm not doing this for anything but for god um it makes it so much easier and so much fun so yeah thank you guys so much that was basically my testimony and me answering all your questions regarding my journey with god and the things that i've been implementing in my life to help just strengthen my relationship with god but yeah thank you guys so much this is so fun um yeah can't wait for the next episode and ooh, just super excited thank you guys god bless you bye